If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to render thanks for the great benefits that we have received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord grant you absolution and remission of all your sins, true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our
wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. And so you're justified when you speak and are bright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth and a sinner from my mother's womb. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin and I shall be pure. Wash me and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Give me the joy of your saving help again, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be for A lesson from the book of Hebrews, the fifth chapter, beginning at the fifth verse. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications, with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered, and having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. Here endeth the lesson. Blessed art thou, O Lord, God of our fathers, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holy Praise and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and dwellest between the cherubim. Praise and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou on the glorious throne of thy kingdom. Praise and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven. Praise and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Praise and exalted. 
from the Gospel of John, the 12th chapter, beginning at the 20th verse. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul was troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, An angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, This voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. Here end of the lesson. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember his holy covenant to perform the oath which he swore to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we, being delivered out of the hand of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him, all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father. And to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care, and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O Almighty God, who alone canst order the unruly wills and affections of sinful men, grant unto thy people that they may love the thing which thou commandest and desire that which thou dost promise. And so, among the sundry and manifold changes of the world, our hearts may surely there be fixed where true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O God, who makest us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of thy Son, our Lord, grant us this day such blessing through our worship of thee, that the days to come may be spent in thy favor. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who didst stretch out thine arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of thy saving embrace, so clothe us in thy spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know thee to the knowledge and love of thee, for the honor of thy name. Amen. <laughs>
What does a coronation look like to you? Like, close your eyes and picture a king or a queen ascending to their golden throne, with a sable cape over their shoulders, scepter in hand, looking proudly over their subject, and then finally sitting on that great throne. I mean, I can, like, hear the British coronation anthem playing in my head. Zadok the priest, Nathan the prophet, crowned Solomon king. I mean, I think that all of us have pretty similar ideas or images when we imagine the crowning of a king or queen. I think that we can also imagine the festivities and celebrations that would be prepared in anticipation for a coronation. I think of a big feast, maybe a festival or something, uh, maybe even jousting. And our passage today is Jesus' version of a pre-coronation festival. Well, I know that Palm Sunday is next Sunday. Just prior to this passage is John's account of Christ's journey into Jerusalem on the donkey colt. Christ was greeted with a huge crowd, and they waved palm branches. And I won't talk too much about it to make sure not to mess with Father Scott's sermon next week. But all this to say, Christ is greeted in a way that is a little bit more typical for a king coming to his coronation. With fanfare, with adoration, with joy. But in our passage, our view of a coronation starts to flip around. In our passage, Christ is anticipating his coronation. Christ is anticipating his glorification. But Christ is not getting ready to walk up grand steps toward a great golden chair to be crowned with a crown of gold and to be given his sable cloak. Jesus in our passage is getting ready to be scourged and crucified. Now, I know that you guys have probably heard sermons about Christ's passion being his coronation before, but I think that it ties well into the idea of the upside-down kingdom. What I mean by that is that we as people view honor totally incorrectly, at least by God's standard. When I think of a person that is honored, I think of like a wealthy industrialist, maybe like the president. But when Jesus is saying in our reading today is totally backwards to our default understanding of honor and glory. Now, the Israelites have been anticipating their Messiah for a long time. That great king of the line of David that will come and liberate them from their long subjugation. I mean... By this point in Israel's history, they are being occupied by the Romans. They are paying taxes to a foreign power. They aren't slaves, but they aren't totally free men. They pray that the warrior king of the line of David will come and free them from their Roman oppressors and sit upon the throne in Jerusalem. This is their expectation, and it is a pretty normal human expectation of what a prophesied liberating king would do for an oppressed nation. But that is not how things work in the upside-down kingdom of God. Yes, Jesus is the great warrior king foretold by the prophets of old, and yes, he comes to wage a great war. But he does not come draped in gold and sable cloaks, and he does not come to expel the Romans by force. His throne is not a throne that we would imagine. Christ comes to liberate not only Israel, but all the world, but not from any earthly power, but from sin and from fallenness. He is the warrior king. He is the Messiah of Israel that will put all the nations under his feet. But this is accomplished on his terms, on God's terms, to establish the upside-down kingdom of God. I mean, Christ's idea of honor and glory is not wrapped up in great armies and great earthly wealth. Christ says that those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. It's all upside-down. Our default understanding of honor is incorrect. Our glory, our glory, is in the death and resurrection of Christ. Now listen listen at what our king tells us in this passage. Listen at his bravery as he anticipates his enthronement as king of all the earth on the cross at Calvary. He says, Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason I have come for this hour. Christ is preparing for his coronation. His crown will not be one of gold, but one of twisted thorns. His cloak will not be one of sable and velvet, but one of rough spun fabric dyed purple. His jewelry will not be gilded with jewels, but will be the cruel nails through his innocent hands and feet. His throne will not be a grand golden chair, but will be the cross on Calvary Hill. On Easter Sunday... Christ will finish his work in the establishment of his upside-down kingdom. And in this upside-down kingdom, the first will be last and the last will be first. 
He who saves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it to eternal life. It's all backwards. And it will always be difficult for us to understand. It will never be our default. It will always be easy for our orientation to flip and for our understanding of honor and glory to reconform to the way that the world understands it. But if you get lost, if your vision flips, if you find yourself back in the patterns of thinking that give you too worldly a perspective of honor and glory, you need only look to the coronation of our Lord. You need only look to our king on his throne made of the rough wood of that accursed tree, his hands and feet affixed with the jewelry of iron nails. We can look to Christ lifted up, drawing all the peoples of the world to himself. It's all upside down. It's difficult to understand, but we have the light of Christ to guide us. Prepare your heart and souls for Easter. Prepare your heart and souls for the festivities of a king's coronation for next week's Palm Sunday. But always remember that this is the establishment of the upside down kingdom of God. And in God's kingdom, it is through death and resurrection in Christ that we find our honor. This morning, we have been asked to pray especially for the Asian American community in our country, also for Charlotte, Mark, Bryce, Bob, Teresa, Jerry, Bill, Brian and Coley, Bryce and Liz, for Brent, Karen, Rick, Jania, Sue, Darlene, Kim, Jenny, Krista and Jim, Caroline, Amelia, Weston, Dave, Lizzie, Jim and Mary Ann, Margaret and Matthew, Pete and Abby, Ava, Beverly, Cindy. We also pray for Sherry, for Dick, and for Lori, Lydia, and Lucy. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we thine unworthy servants do give thee most humble and hearty thanks for all thy goodness and loving kindness to us and to all men. We bless thee for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for thine inestimable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we beseech thee, give us that due sense of all thy mercies that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful, and that we show forth thy praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to thy service, and by walking before thee in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.